Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to another episode of uh, taking a new unit uh, under the uh, microscope together with Randall again. Thanks for having you, man. Hey, thanks for inviting me. It's always exciting talking about new units. Um, I know we did another one of these a little while ago with uh, yeah. the uh, Crownland Scouts. Crownland Scouts. Yeah. So it's exciting to see uh, it's two new units in a row, I think, that are within my faction. There are factions that I play, so happy exactly. to be here. Exactly. So, so, so actually, that was the first thing I thought about when I seen, or when I've seen that that a great joy get a u- new unit. I was instantly thinking about you know we need Randall on the on the show to talk about the Iron Victory crew. All right. Mm-hmm. So, what's your b- before we jump in? What is your like first overall impression of the unit? Uh, as far as like stats, or are we going to talk about like the aesthetics? Uh, well, just, just kind of just initial let, initial take. Okay, let me let, let me rephrase it. Are you excited to have that in the roster? Yeah, I'm excited. They're they're uh, they're not doing anything wildly different than than other units. They're kind of uh, you know, as we'll get into. I think they're they're kind of filling in like a a middle ground between certain other units. You know, they're not yeah. something wild and crazy, uh, but they're they're just they're a good. They seem like a good solid unit. So. Um, yeah, I'm 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 excited for them. They're not they're not garbage. It's you know it's always nice when a, a new unit comes out and it's not just complete trash. So um, yeah, that's good. I'm setting yeah, the bar my, very low, my... obviously. <laughs> well, well, my 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 first impression was when I when 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 I saw just the just the box right, and I've seen mm-hmm. um I've seen the 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 release date. My 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 first my my first thought was that will be after the patch. So let's see. Right. So yeah. and second and second uh, was uh, I'm always really excited to to have units that are particularly um, um, like like matched to to a commander. So like the honor guard mm-hmm. or like the um, what do you call it from 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 the from rat from from rattle shirt, um, the bone lord oh, the, chosen, uh, bone lords. Bone yeah, lord chosen. chosen or these guys. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I, I I'm, I'm totally excited, like in general. Uh, but let's but let's check the stats, right? So, um, but but that's the overall um, uh, th- thinking I had. So yeah, this is the box art. Um, I really like the lizard line being slayed there on the on the shore, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so it's so thematic. It's so fitting to 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 the books and stuff uh, like that. I also like the those um, the, the the armor. I really like the banner. I really like the helmets. So uh, I think this is a well. From an aesthetics point of view, I, I I really like the unit. What do you think? Yeah, I think they look really cool. They do look like an elite unit. You know, a lot of Grejo units look like they kind of have uh, like a patchwork of various pieces of armor that they've looted off of other uh, people they've killed. But mm-hmm. these guys look like they are definitely wearing like a uniform. You know, they're wearing uh, armor that's been made for them. Uh, because they're a, a special unit, and yeah. they, I do like that it, they their armor style matches that of Victorian already, yeah, which is which is pretty cool. Um, also, it, it looks like on the box art, their their armor has kind of a uh, like a, a greenish tint to it. You know, it's kind mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. got like an enameling or whatever it's called on it. So that's kind of cool. I know that like in the medieval world, that would be extremely expensive. So it makes it makes sense that this elite crew. Uh, has kind of the best armor, the best, at least the fanciest armor you could get for a bunch of yeah. And those uh, scales, readers. right? They look great, mm-hmm. right? Those the, yeah. a lot of scale armor up here looks looks mm-hmm. looks really thematic for this, like, you know, um, yeah, people. this elite unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So first things first. Um, when we talk aesthetics, let's go to 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 the miniatures, right? Um, mm-hmm. So as we said. <laughs> The most obvious thing, or the the, the 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 most prominent thing in this unit is, it's for me, it's definitely the banner. So the banner with right. this cra- with this huge kraken on, on top of it, I really like it. Uh, so so, what do you think as a as a great joy player? What do you think? Uh, so a couple of points. First of all, the the banner. I have a couple of gripes with the banner. I'll I'll say right off uh-huh. the bat. Okay. Uh-huh. So first, I'm not a fan of the huge kraken. I I think it looks cool, but I'm always thinking from like a practicality standpoint. Okay. So I'm, to me, I'm thinking if you're the banner man, that, that accessory up on the top of your, of your banner is probably going to weigh like 
20 pounds or 10 pounds or something. So <laughs> it, it just makes that thing really unwieldy for him. So unless he's using that as like a, as like a club or something, then I think it's a little bit impractical. So I always am more of a fan of banners that can be used as a weapon, you know, because mm-hmm. like a banner with just like a spear point at the top or something like that. So I, I think it's a little too much for my taste personally, but it's, I mean, it'll paint, paint up really well and look really cool. Yeah. Uh, then the other little gripe, I guess, is that the banner doesn't have a uh, mm. three-dimensional yeah. logo or anything on it. So it's going to kind of force people to either make it just one solid color or a simple pattern or people that are really anal about their banners, it's going to force them to try to freehand a Kraken or something or something on it. So uh, that's a little bit annoying, you know, because I like to be as, as lazy as possible when it comes to painting. So I would have preferred there to be some kind of embossed logo or sigil on there that I could have easily just painted around. Um, yeah, true. But, and true. then, uh, and then one last one last note, mm-hmm. I think on the the models, uh, I think we've already said the models look really cool. I, I'll give one one big uh, shout out here for the designers or the the modelers who put a sword in in the hand of one of the models. I I don't know how long I've I've been grumbling uh, locally or in, in, internally about the fact that all the Greyjoy models are just carrying axes. I you know I. I think some of them should have been carrying swords a long time ago. I think the only other Greyjoy model maybe carrying a sword that isn't a named character is the Iron Maker's Bannerman. I think he's he's holding the banner and then he has a sword in one of his mm-hmm. hands. Um, I might be mistaken, but I, I don't think anybody else um, is carrying a sword other than named characters. So I'm I'm happy to see that some line infantry are finally carrying a sword instead of just an axe or a mace. Mm. Well, that's actually also the miniature I was really um, taking a deeper look at because it, it it looks just so cool. Also, his mm-hmm. pose, not only the sword, but but also the yeah. helmet. The helmet is really cool, right? And yeah. uh, also, also the pose, like he's about to, you know, to make. I don't know. I don't know. I, I he's I, like I just, stomping forward. Yes, yeah, like yes, yeah, confidently. But, yes, mm-hmm. yes. So yeah, I I really I really really like the model. So uh, mm-hmm. but but you know, great joys are all, all, also like, like e- either way, great joy players are real really spoiled when it comes to yeah. They have some of the most yes. yeah amazing models in the game. So so sure. so it's totally fine to get another one. Right. Even even, <laughs> even though uh, I was like in the spoiler channel on on our Discord, I was like always saying when we when, when we got all these um these um these little hints along the way, I was so yeah. hoping for something for Night's Watch because Night's Watch is now up. Right. To be honest, mm-hmm. right. Night's Watch needs yeah. something, not because of the patch, but just because they they didn't receive a new unit for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, it's been like now. at least a year. Yeah, yeah they got the Shadow more, Tower Spearman, I think, more, or Veramir, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's it, it was the Shadow Tower Spearman, and that's I would say even two years now. So I think I think you know Night's Watch needs something now. Okay, yeah. so that's on the that's on the uh, aesthetics, so to say. So let's jump in to the real talk, right? The rules, mm-hmm. the rules. So to to summarize it first, so we have a, a five movement. We have regular or average or normal six point uh, attacking profile the, with a boarding axe so hitting on threes a seven five four profile a four armor which is pretty incredible for gray joys and a six mm-hmm. uh, morale which is um yeah let's say normal or decent yeah right it's a, it's like a good gray joy um morale yeah it's a good gray joy morale and 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 uh, yeah it's a it's just a good unit so the boarding axe brings sundering which is obviously the best Yep, keyword fantastic. in the game fantastic keyword so uh this is great um it um it also deals a panic token to the uh to the defender if you have two mm-hmm. pillage tokens uh the captain's men it's it is a is a um, unique ability so if you have victorian Greyjoy attached you start the game with one pillage token and they also have domineering pride which which basically says when engaged with enemies with fewer remaining ranks they always pass their panic test right yeah. so that's yeah. the summary and i think for six points this is a well-designed unit in terms of all the stats they are a little bit like in between between the stony shore pillages and the reverse so to say um mm-hmm. they are kind of in between um yeah so what's your first thing how to 
where to put them and how to use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just looking at the card, you know, if you just put your hand over the, like the right side of the card, mm -hmm. just the, just the attack profile and the, and the armor profile and the speed and everything like that's already a, a pretty solid six point unit. I yeah. would say, you know, good armor, especially for gray joys, good attack uh, stats, you know, good dice decay. It's like a, it's like a, you're like an average seven point units attack profile, you know, like I think the, you know, three plus uh, and seven dice and everything is what you would get from like Iron Makers or any kind of standard uh, like profile. Uh, five movement speed is good. Sundering, fantastic. And then really where these guys, where you have to look at, you know, are these guys worth it or not uh, is kind of in, in the rest of what you see here. So, you know, you've got the giving the panic token, which is good, but then you look at the unit, they don't have any other kind of panic synergy you know they don't have vicious or anything but then you're obviously thinking well if this if, if victorian is going to go in this unit victorian gives the units uh vicious right so yes um so victorian in the unit gives them vicious which synergizes with the panic token and then they start off with one pillage token with victorian so they go from a six plus morale to immediately a five plus morale so they're now really in that elite morale uh tier yeah. and then domineering pride domineering pride is always one of these abilities that i you know it's it's like a nice to have extra ability but it's not ever an ability i think you want to pay for because it's not something you can always control mm -hmm. you know a domineering pride is it's like a if the circumstances are are correct then it's an ability that can be helpful but otherwise for me it's like one of those you know half point abilities or almost an ability you don't want to consider into the cost because it's something that is very situational. Yeah. Uh, you know, so when I'm looking at this ability, I'm almost not considering domineering pride into whether I'm taking this unit or not. It's I'm looking at the base stats. I'm looking at the, the pillage ability of panicking a, a unit and uh, I'm looking at the sundering. So, you know, I, I think the, I think taking them in a Victorian list is, is a uh, is almost a I wouldn't say it's almost an auto include, but it's a definite definite consideration. If if not for Victorian, then Newt who counts as Victorian. But yeah. then the the bigger question for these guys is: Do you take them anywhere other than a Victorian list? So that's kind of what I've been trying to kind of think about more. True. Um, yeah, on the dominating pride thing, it could be good against stuff like uh, Lannister supremacy or some morale. Mm -hmm tactics cards right it can be yeah it can be good but as you said i all i uh, said um it, it it's very situational and it comes down to the matchup um but yeah it's 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 nice to have it could it could work in in certain um circumstances right um yeah it's great against solo units you know like dragons giants the yeah. mountain that rides but then again you know unless you're playing somebody that you know is always bringing the like, a list like that that's not one of those things you can really plan for yeah. so um it's kind of again in that nice to have category but not something that is applicable for all situations yeah so we talked already so and i want to pick up this point do you pick it somewhere else than victorian so let's take at some like obvious attachments you would you mm -hmm. you would put in there so there's obviously uh, Victorian Greyjoy commander, and as you already s said, um, it really it really benefits, or the whole unit uh, gives synergizes really well with with Vic because he brings mm -hmm. vicious, and they deal out the the panic when they receive their second pillage token. Also, the vulnerable the the vulnerable goes out on on furious charge, and they have sundering, so they will they will definitely hit hard when they come in on full ranks. They will hit hard. Um, so also, also his cards also make, makes, makes that unit benefit from the cards. Um, my, my main question before we take a look at the other attachment is, or which we can discuss, uh, in more depth later, but, but, um, is, is this unit better than the silenced men? This is a big question mark for me. We can, you know, let's take a look at the silenced men uh, soon. But th this mm -hmm. is still a big question mark when I see Victorian commander. Is is that really a thing? I I, I don't know. So the the second thing would be the Victorian Greyjoy 
uh, Master of the Iron Victory. So the two point attachment, which also um, with this four armor attack profile, uh, not not attack with the four armor, um, they uh -huh. could they they can they can have some benefit from Relentless, because they won't probably won't lose as much as other greater units. So Relentless could play a role. Um, combining those two and yeah finally as you said newt as a as a natural thing because it just copies victorian and also yeah. brings the vulnerable so so what do you think about the attachments uh yeah i mean victor victorian commander obviously is an obvious uh consideration but then like you said there's there's the competition with the silence men which we'll, we'll probably go into soon yeah so uh maybe we could table that discussion for a, a minute but yeah. Then there's the Victorian two-point attachment. Yeah, I think a lot of Greyjoy players are desperate to find a place for Victorian two-point attachment because we all want to, you know, a, we all, all want to have fun with that sweet, sweet, relentless uh, action. Mm -hmm. But he's a two-point attachment that makes them an eight-point unit. And yes. uh, I just, I just have, I'm very hesitant to invest that much money into or that that much that many points into this unit. Uh, with Victorian two-point attachment. If you really want to make make use of that captain's uh, whatever it's called ability to get the free pillage, mm -hmm. I think you just throw Newt in there. You know, Newt yeah. outside of a outside of a Victorian list, Newt costs one point. He gives you that extra pillage mm -hmm. and a couple of other useful abilities. Uh, but then, even then, though, he's he's a one-point attachment that makes them a seven-point unit. And at seven points, you could bring another unit of silence men or you could bring an iron maker or or something else so uh it's a you know it's a it's a tough decision whether to throw newt in there just for one uh for one pillage token when you could get that pillage else from elsewhere you know you could even throw a throw your on one point attachment into mm. something and then yep. pass pillage around so it's uh it's one of those situations where you can see synergies but do you want to force a synergy for the sake of the synergy or, do, you know, or do you need to be a little bit more maybe logical or rational about how you want to split your points up? Um, so mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm not sold on, I'm not necessarily sold on, on nude outside of uh, like Victorian list, but it is something that would be cool to try. And I'm definitely more skeptical with the Victorian two point attachment, just because it's such a heavy point. Big invest. Yeah. 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 True. Is there any other before we jump to the silence man? Is there any other attachment you could think about, um, which could make make this unit work? Also, yeah, if you're not if you're not putting Victorian or Newt in them, I would say I my go to is always Dagmer, uh, Battle Scars. Battle Dagmer. Scars. Yeah, 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 because he can just from the jump he can give them vicious, which will help out. You know, if if you get them if you get them another pillage token, you can use the vicious and the panic token to help hopefully push some extra panic wounds through. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they get really beat up, then you've got all three battle scar abilities, which, you know, if you're hitting at highest attack, die value, vicious sundering and rerolls, then these guys are going to hit pretty hard down to the last man. So I, uh, I think Dagmar is a, is a good choice, but then again, they're, then they're a seven point unit. Uh, but, I have trouble building any Greyjoy list that I don't throw Dagmar in somewhere because it's just such a battle scars yeah. is such a battle scars is yeah battle scars is great for everyone right it's a mm -hmm. really cool change that we got in S four and makes a mm -hmm. lot of units um yeah so or, or actually the new battle scars is so so much more helpful in each and every list and for for each and every faction so you see yeah. it quite a lot right you see it in in Freefall quite a lot you see it now in Night's Watch a lot with with the new the new Corin, right? So it's everywhere, yeah. right? It's also in great choice. Um, okay, so so let the elephant into the room, right? The Silence Man. The Silence Man mm -hmm. in S4, uh, and even before, the obvious pick for Victorian Commander. Obvious thing, every time you play meta, every time you go to a tournament, you see Vic in Silence Man. For obvious reasons, right? Just to, just to, 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 to recap for everyone. Um, so with Vicious, um, this unit, or with, with two pillage tokens, enemies in short range suffer minus one to morale test rolls. So that really synergizes with the Vicious and um, mm -hmm. 
with Victorian in general. So and they also have a seven six five. Uh, uh, hitting on threes profile. Sure, their defense is not as great, but um, they also have some sustain through Dauntless. So um, yeah, so I, 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 I'm still, I still have this question mark. Aren't they still better, right? Uh, I mean, they should be better in general because it's seven points and six points, but would you really trade that? Would you really trade this great synergy that Silence Men bring to Victorian? Would you trade that for the Iron uh, Victory crew, I'm not sure. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, at this point, at this point, I don't think I do. You know, mm. for one more point, you get the Super Sundering, you get the Dauntless, yes, and you get the Morale Bubble, and you get a, a much nicer Dice Decay, uh, and you get the and you get the extra movement speed. So I, I think right now, I think. You still take Silence Men and Victorian, and then maybe you throw Newt in the Iron Victory crew, yeah. um, maybe. But I think another another kind of elephant in the room, or you know, looming looming elephant potentially entering the room at some point, is the the next the next patch that's coming out, and yeah. what what that means for the Silence Men, what that means for Greyjoys, and I think we can all expect that patch to come out before this unit drops because this unit drops in September and the developers said the patch is going to come out in the summertime or that's mm -hmm. at least the kind of roadmap we've been on historically so I yep. think we can all expect that patch to probably drop within the next month or so of this video coming out so mm -hmm. uh, if that happens I, I think we can probably reasonably expect there to be changes to Balon NCU at least yeah. since yep. uh, there's been so much kind of outcry about Balon NCU and I think most Greyjoy players who are honest with themselves will say that yeah something needs to be done with Balon NCU yeah so I think how that affects the Silence Men pick is that you know speaking for myself as someone who is runs Silence Men a little carelessly and at the moment because I would always bring Balon NCU and he's my insurance policy for silence men. You know, if you want to kill my silence men, you go right ahead. Cause they're going to just come right back in your flank. I think if Balon becomes a six point NCU or his ability becomes worse, like, you know, you have to deploy a unit in your deployment zone instead of a flank table edge or something. Yeah. And maybe you don't take Balon NCU anymore. Now the silence men become a lot more fragile than they were before. So, True. you know, maybe at that point you look at, the iron victory crew and think hey you know these guys are a four plus armor versus a five plus armor and maybe that now makes a big difference in my uh, decision making as far mm -hmm. as which unit to put victorian in uh, so you know i think we're we're gonna have to see what this patch does to balon and whether that changes the uh, kind of list building options that the Greyjoy players take into consideration. But I think right now in the game state as it is right now, I would keep Victorian in the silence men personally. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So we we like like before before we 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 started the recording, I put together with with uh, Dominic Tipsy Tengu on the our basic our our, our great joy expert right that was mm -hmm. all, all also on your on your channel already. Yep. Uh, he put together a list. Um, that in current meta, as you said before the patch, he would play now as he, if he would um, have the the um, Iron Victory crew right now, that mm -hmm. would be um, his list. So maybe you can guide us through this um, and explain why. Yeah, so we've got Silence Men with Victorian, and then the Iron Victory crew with Newt. So you know, obvious picks there. Silence Men, I I think yeah, and Dominic agrees here that they're still just the strongest home for Victorian mm. uh, and then Newt and the Iron Victory crew so that they still benefit from uh, having Victorian in them so you get the free pillage right off the bat uh, and then the Hedge Knights with the Glory Seeker as as you were discussing uh, before the call with me I, Dominic is always likes to have more maneuverability in his Greyjoy list which is yep. definitely something that Greyjoys are lacking so the Hedge Knights are there to, to provide that. And then hmm. the Bowman with Euron one point attachment to start off with two pillage so that he can, so that those Bowmen can, uh, you know, toss, toss pillage immediately to either Victorian or uh, to the Iron Victory crew. And then on the NCU side, he's got Makoro to uh, shut down 
the abilities of another unit or you know protect one of one of his own units from uh, certain uh, abilities and then Roderick so that you you can use Roderick to fish for Victorian's cards that you're really looking for you know like those assault orders you can have them handy whenever you need them and then Balon uh, the Balon NCU for obvious reasons to yeah. resurrect whichever unit is going to get blown up first which uh, probably would be the silencemen because I think right now, you know, we kind of run the silencemen very aggressively because we have Balon as that insurance policy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think right now, as the game as it is right now, this is a, definitely a very solid use of the Iron Victory crew, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Like Makoro, he always used Makoro re really offensively. So when he, mm -hmm. when he put together his deck with Assault Orders and all the cards he needs to to, to basically, well, not one shot, but almost one shot a unit. Then he picks mm -hmm. Makoro, right? And he he does not only only um, um, shuts down orders, but he also shuts down tactics cards, correct? So um, mm -hmm. you yeah. can't do anything about this alpha charge. And this is something that, that Dominic plays really well um, and uh, has a lot of success with it. So, um, yeah, I really like the list, but as you said, when the patch comes, I don't know, in July, August, wherever, um, or whenever, we will, s I, I, I'm, I'm really sure we will see at least changes to Balon, but uh, they also said that they want to touch on Commanders too, right? So there might mm -hmm. even be, not saying Victorian needs to be changed, because Victorian is in my, like in our, let's say, aggressive Commander bucket. He's, he's, yeah. he's kind of like similar to others, right? He's not, he's not stronger, he's not... Mm -hmm. Not 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 weaker than any other like Cotter, Great John, uh, uh, Gregor, right? He's 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 right up there, right? So, um, mm -hmm. which is fine, but there might be some other changes than just Balon on the Great Joe side, and that will yeah. definitely influence the Iron Victory crew, um, also. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, do you have anything to add on list building in general? Because we had this one, or or maybe this is one question I I still have for you. Um, so what, like not the total, like not the full list, but what could you think about when I give you the task of not using Victorian Commander and you still need to use the Iron Victory crew? Yeah, so that's that was one of the first things I tried to think about because I've had this this patch, you know, kind of looming in in my thoughts as far as what it's going to do and. I'm just assuming that Balon is going to take a big hit in this patch. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't have any like inside information that will tell me what's going to happen to Balon, but I'm just kind of thinking like worst case scenario with, no. if I'm trying to plan for the future here of the faction. So um, if that was the case and I was going to use this outside of a Victorian list, I was actually thinking about trying this unit in an Asha Greyjoy list. So, mm -hmm. you know, you throw Asha Commander into this unit, uh, it gives them boisterous charisma, which will help them from getting uh, tactics cards and orders played on them. Gives them iron resolve, so you know even if they're even if their domineering pride isn't helping them auto pass panic tests, then iron resolve is boosting their their morale even higher and mitigating panic damage. And then stubborn tenacity, so anytime they're passing a, a panic test or a, I think. Stubborn tenacity is what a morale test if they pass a morale test, um, or is it a panic test? Anyway, um, when they pass one of the things, yeah. uh, let me see here. Uh, stubborn tenacity is a panic test. Yeah. Okay. So, anytime they're passing a panic test, they're dealing an auto wound back. And then the kicker for Asha Commander is that you can throw Carl in with this unit. So. Carl will synergize with their pillage ability to give a panic token. So if these guys have two pillage on them and Carl does an auto wound to guarantee that they are going to take a panic test and then he panics them, or I mean the unit panics that the unit they're attacking, and then you can potentially push through more wounds. So cool. yeah, good um, idea. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about Asha also her, her commander tactics cards. Uh, a couple of them require, passing a morale test which a panic test is a morale test so you know raider bravery uh kind of gives that unit you can attach it to that unit and give them essentially like boldness and courage to get more dice uh, attack dice and then ironborn metal to heal units back or yeah heal wounds back so 
for me, I, I would think I'm thinking immediately about Asha Greyjoy. I, I also just like playing Asha. I think she's a fun commander to use. Uh, and I'm I'm sure there's other you know, other commanders that can be used uh, with this unit. I think probably some some of the commanders I'm I'm hoping get like another look in this next patch. Like maybe Dagmar can get a, a little bit of a of a boost. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. Baylor can get a get looked at a little bit um we'll see we'll see what happens in this patch but yeah for me right now i'm looking at asha as the non-victorian unit to take with uh with the ironborn or the iron victory crew yeah uh great idea on that list i will discuss um as soon as we you know we we know a little bit more about the patch there will be definitely some more discussions going on on the iron victory crew so um yeah but that completes our review on this uh uh, unit which comes out on september 6th so uh yeah look out for your you know supply source of of of, uh you you trust most and um yeah i'm i'm really excited for the patch right uh i mean that will totally put all things upside down again so uh, i'm really excited to see that yeah so that's that really completes the review um thanks randall for being our great joy expert today i really thanks for inviting me sure i really enjoyed the 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 um this recording and uh i will definitely see you soon when the pitch when the patch hits right we will have some more talks looking forward uh, to it yeah, that's going to be awesome, right? Um, okay. So, and for you out there, if you if we miss anything, if you say this is the obvious pick, this as an attachment, this is this is how you play them, this is what to, you we you, you didn't cover, then just drop it down in the comments below. Reach out on the Discord to Randall or myself or, you know, who whomever, all the awesome people on the Discord. And uh, yeah, until we meet again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.